Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, now, come on, I get a better greeting in the, from the church. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much. On behalf of Pasadena Presbyterian Church and the members of the congregation, it is our honor to welcome um, this wonderful event from Pasadena Public Libraries, One City, One Story. We're so glad that you could enjoy our space, and we hope that you feel welcome and comfortable here. Uh, it is truly an honor to be involved in the community, and we're grateful that we can sponsor some of this. It was the Pasadena Public Library that reached out to us uh, in the midst of the crisis of having to redo their whole facility, and we are here to help and support. I don't know about you all, but I have started to read this book, and I am looking forward to hearing more from the author. Um, so I'm going to get out of your way, and I'm going to introduce to you the president of the Friends of Pasadena Public Library, Janice Siegel, who will introduce more people to you. Thanks, Janice. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Janice Siegel, president of the Friends of the Pasadena Public Library, and I'm very glad to see so many of you here for Summer One City, One Story. We want to thank the tireless Christine Reeder and all the library employees who helped make this event possible today, and the author. We're very, very excited. And the fact that this book is in English and in Spanish is also a wonderful thing. Would that we were all bilingual, right? So thank you very much for coming. We hope that you join us at the friend, in the Friends of the Pasadena Public Library. We do have membership forms at the table. We are selling the book, and the author, of course, is signing the book. So thank you again. Thank you, Janice. Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here for today's One City, One Story program with best-selling author Maria Amparo Escandon and her best-selling book, L.A. Weather. I'm Tim McDonald, Pasadena Public Library Director, and the weather report... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that. I was going to let you know the weather report for today is 76 degrees. Uh, Sun is breaking out of a mostly cloudy morning. We've got a light wind from the south at about four miles per hour. So I would say the forecast is very promising for a wonderful afternoon today. We're gonna to enjoy a terrific program. Uh, things are really exciting at the library this year. We've just opened a children's and teen center at the former Jefferson School on Villa Street, east of Hill Avenue, that's thriving. We've got a summer reading program in full swing. We're about to reopen the Linda Vista Branch Library on Wednesday with a brand new roof. It's terrific. And things are in full swing on the retrofit and renovation of the design phase of our beloved Central Library. So we've hired a wonderful team of architects and consultants that are hard at work engaging with the community and city staff on designing a much needed seismic retrofit for our beloved Central Library. We are looking at a two-year design phase and then another potentially up to 36 months of construction pending funding. So it's a long project ahead of us, but it comes with a really important outcome at the end. At the end of this process, we'll have a beautifully restored and safely retrofitted Central Library for the entire community to use that will be true to the historic character of this beloved building. Well, we'll also make some thoughtful enhancements to meet the current and future needs of Pasadena as we move forward into the next 100 years of the Central Library's legacy in the community. So if you'd like to learn more about the project uh, and keep up with its progress, visit the library's webpage. You can see a lot of more information about the project there. Um, we're really excited to have the community engaged in that process too. You'll see throughout the summer some pop-up events. I think the next one is at the farmer's market on July 8th where um, the library will have a table asking people for input about that, that project. It's my honor to participate along with you today in today's program. Um, one City, One Story program is all about bringing readers together, like us, we have that in common. People that are open to hearing different voices, 
exploring new worlds and new ideas together, and promoting tolerance of different viewpoints. Today's program really is a great example of that. Across America, other libraries are not as lucky right now. You've probably seen in the news, there are a lot of libraries that are battling censorship. And I am very grateful for Pasadena and the way that we embrace diversity and are open to programs like the one we're about to enjoy together today. It's awesome. Thanks. Thanks to her. It's great to hear. So, 2023 marks the 21st anniversary of the One City, One Story program. It's amazing. And like I just said, it's all about bringing together differing points of view, promoting tolerance for different viewpoints, celebrating a love of literature and um, exploring themes of a book, of an engaging book all together. And I think you'll find that the book we're about to learn about today does all of those things. A 13-member committee worked many months reviewing, I think it was 11 finalists for the book that, that was ultimately chosen. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic program led by um, a terrific group of library staff that I'll talk about in a, in a second. Um, and this year, we are proud not to have um, j not just one um, selected title, but two. Many of you in March were here for our talk about Sparks Like Stars. And today, we're going to hear about LA weather, which is going to be a real treat for us. I have to say a couple of, I'm honored to say a couple of special thanks today before we start today's program. And the first go to our sponsors. 21 years ago, the first founding sponsor of this program and continuing to sponsor this program, special thanks to the Friends of the Pasadena Public Library. And I also want to thank our community sponsor, the Pasadena Literary Alliance, Pasadena Festival of Women Authors. We're grateful for your sponsorship too. Thank you. I'd also like to extend our sincere gratitude to the Reverend Dr. Lisa Hansen, our host today, the Pasadena Presbyterian Church. I think we can all agree this is a fantastic venue for this program, and we're grateful to be back. Awesome. Thank you. The Library Commission for the City of Pasadena came up with the idea for One City, One Story 21 years ago. And subsequent commissions have embraced the idea and supported One City, One Story every year since. So I'd like to briefly um, acknowledge and thank our current members of the Library Commission. We can save our applause till the end. But special thanks to our Library Commissioners, uh, Chairperson Mike Stammer, who's here today, Adrian Bass is here today, Chelsea Dickerson, Robert Karatsu, Bo Patadian, and Leslie Rosenthal all here, are here today too. Thank you to our library commissioners. And next, our library selection committee for One City, One Story. I mentioned earlier, months of work goes into selecting the right book to engage the community. And we have a fantastic group of volunteer committee members that read a lot of literature through the year and do their best to select a book with an, who, with an author that is available to come to Pasadena and will engage our community uh, in today's program. So I'd like to thank the members of this year's committee, and we could save our applause till the end of the list. It's a very impressive array of Pasadena citizens. Sharon Calkin, Rosemary Cho, Carrie Custer, Brooke Larson Garlock, Jill Hunting, Sally Kauser, Susanna Porras, Maggie Reyes Rothner, Deborah K. Sanchez, Mary Schuler, and Arnie Siegel. Thanks to our selection committee. Thanks to our selection committee. Also take a, a moment to thank the library staff that work very hard on planning these programs. Many individuals um, contribute to this effort, and I won't name them all, but I do have to s give a special thanks to Christine Reeder, whose leadership is exemplary. And Christine, you are just terrific. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to thank our 2023 One City, One Story community partners. These groups will be um, presenting programs throughout the rest of the summer that have a kinship with the book, exploring themes of LA weather. So look for um, upcoming events at the library by these community sponsors, the Pasadena Department of Water and Power, um, Roman's Bookstore, Marissa Bosquez-White, Natalia Molina, Kenneth Strange, 
and Tim Wheeler all will be leading programs throughout the month of July that explore the themes of LA weather. So I'd like to thank those community partners too. Thank you. And finally, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I think it's always an important idea to look for your closest exit in case of an emergency. Just take a moment to see where that is. There's several around us. If you're looking for the restrooms, you're gonna head straight back to the right in the back of the sanctuary or across the courtyard to the Gamble Lounge. There are some more restrooms there too. Um, I'll ask you to kindly silence your cell phone during the program. And I'd like to let you know that the Friends of the Pasadena Public Library have a table in the back where we're selling copies of LA Weather if you don't have one yet. You can also check one out at the library. We've got um, copies in English and in Spanish in a variety of formats, print, ebook, audiobook, uh, ebook, um, whatever, you, whatever your preference is, or purchase one at a local bookstore like Vroman's. Um, they've got copies available too. Our author has graciously agreed to stay at the end of the program to sign copies too. So if you brought one today, or if you'd like to purchase one today, Maria will sign one for you. It's great. That's all I've got. It's now my pleasure to announce our District 3 council member who represents the neighborhood we're in right now, as well as our beloved Central Library, council member Justin Jones. Let's give another round of applause for Tim McDonald. And you know, and, and Tim was just, uh, you was acting or interim? Acting. He was acting, and then the city manager recently appointed Tim to be the permanent director of library services. So that's a big feature, and we're happy to have him in this city. <clears throat> and I'm really looking forward today to today's conversation because when I picked up the the book, and you know, they, as a council member, they give you a copy of the book. So I started to read it, and I read the back of it, and I said, "Man, it's about deception, betrayal, and lies." I thought it, she was writing about the city council. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> but this year's summer edition of LA Weather is being celebrated this summer with an array of programming opportunities planned around the theme of this book. Tonight's conversation, author Maria Amparo Escondon is the highlight of our annual One City, One Story in the city of Pasadena. Escondón is a Mexican-born U.S. resident, best-selling bilingual novelist, short story writer, screenwriter, and film producer. My gosh, is there anything you don't do? <laughs> and, 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 and her stories concentrate on family relationships, loss, forgiveness, faith, and self-discovery. A linguistics with a sharp ear for dialogue, Escondón explores the dynamics of language in border subcultures and the evolution of Spanglish. Her work has been translated into over 21 languages and is currently read in more than 85 countries. So we are glad to have her here today to enjoy a, a a conversation and presentation and look forward to hearing about her fascinating novel. So it is now my pleasure to introduce Pasadena's 2023 One City, One Story author, Maria Amparo Escondón. Well, hello everybody. <laughs> Hi. Oh, thank you. Yes, very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, the, the One City, One Story uh, Selection Committee, um, the Friends of the Pasadena Public Library, the Pasadena uh, Literary Alliance, the Pasadena Festival, of women authors, the Pasadena Water and Power Department, Romance Bookstore, Maria Vasquez, the program partners, uh, Marisa Vasquez, Natalia Molina, Kenneth, Van, eh, Kenneth Strange, and Tim Wheeler, and Christine Reeder, who did an amazing job in getting me out here. <laughs> she organized all this, um, this logistics and everything was very, very gracious, and uh, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people coming together as a community uh, to promote reading 
uh, to make stories available for the public. And uh, as a writer, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I, I really appreciate, I really, really appreciate uh, this effort. Uh, I want to tell you in specific to all the people that I mentioned in these organizations, uh, I want to celebrate you. Uh, I think this is a best opportunity for me to celebrate you because of what you do. I come from a country where, where I grew up, there were no public libraries. Uh, there was maybe the university library, maybe there was uh, little libraries in embassies, you know. Uh, there was um, just very few and far between. And there was one uh, that was called the Benjamin Franklin Library that was, of course, sponsored by some American organization. And when I was in high school, and this is a little story I want to share with you. When I was in high school, I was sent to do research to this library. Uh, our English teacher sent us to do some research, and she said, well, go there. So I packed a bunch of friends into my VW bug, and there was maybe eight of us, and I drove to the public library. And when we got there, there was no parking, so we had to double park. So I was double parked on the street, and I told my friends, well, hurry up and do the research, and I'll wait for you in the car. And so they all went in, and uh, sure enough, a policeman came, you know, came over and says, well, you're not supposed to be double parked right here. And I said, oh, excuse me, officer, but uh, my dad owns this building. And he says, oh, really? Who is your dad? And I said, well, Benjamin Franklin. Can't you see the pl <laughs> plate on the door? And he said, oh, OK, but don't take too long. <laughs> I said, fine. <laughs> you know? So this, is, this story just kind of goes to show you, you know, the privilege it is to have access to a public library. I didn't grow up with public libraries until I came to the US. And when I immigrated, I was 23 years old. And the one thing that I cherished the most, more than my green card, was my library card. Because it really opened up the world for me. And I was able to read so many books and practice my English and uh, learn the language. And to me, it was a discovery. And, and over the years, I've thought about this. And I said, you know, all my fellow Americans, because I've since become a citizen, um, you know, a lot of people don't really appreciate what they have. They don't, uh, they take it for granted, you know. Oh, there's a public library there. And yeah, I have my library card, and, and I use it. but. But it is a privilege. It's an amazing privilege. So I want to celebrate all of you who work in any capacity, whether you're volunteers or your staff. Celebrate what you do. And I also want to, um, you know, whenever I can, I encourage people, you know, oh, you don't have a library card. You better get one. And, and, and so that's what makes this is so special, you know, being invited to One City, One Story, have my book, LA Weather, be a part of, of, of this. Of, you know, I, I, I walk into this room, I came in with Tim, and I looked at all those book covers, and, 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 I, and I, I, I almost teared up because I, I couldn't believe that, that my book is going to be among these next year. There will be you know, an orange book there <laughs> by a Mexican, uh, a Mexican uh, writer among all these great books. So I feel humbled and blessed, and uh, I want to thank you for that. And I want to tell you a little bit now about the book, right? 
So LA Weather um, came to be while I was in New York, funny enough. Um, I came 40 years ago in May. In May, I turned 40 years since I immigrated. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an immigration party uh, this year because I want to celebrate that. I don't know if it's a thing, but <laughs> immigration party sounds about right. And, and, um, and I came to L.A., and I've lived in L.A. all these years, except for four years that my husband and I moved to New York uh, for his work. He had um, a work-related uh, trip, and we, st we stayed for four years. And it was fantastic, and I loved New York. But what was really interesting is how I looked at LA from a distance. Um, I started to really, because I missed LA, I don't know, it was very subjective, and I, I kept thinking about Los Angeles and what it meant to me, and I started looking at all the little details, but I wasn't looking at LA from a distance with a telescope. I was looking at LA with a kaleidoscope, because everything took different forms and strange, you know, it was like, that's what LA is. It's, it's, you have to see it with a kaleidoscope because it's just so diverse and so different from everywhere else. And, and that's what I love about it. So I, I wanted to write about LA. And then on top of that, I met uh, quite a few New Yorkers who told me very assuredly that there was no weather in LA. And I said, wait a minute. So I really felt compelled to debunk that trope. You know, I said, I, I need to write about the weather because this can't go on. You know, I, I, have to, I have to, you know, prove people wrong. And so I started to write about a, a Mexican-American family in LA who are affected directly, uh, you know, the, 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 the weather and the climate change affect them directly. And, and that is because, you know, climate change is not something that is going to happen in 2050. Climate change is already happening, and it's already affecting us personally. In little ways, if you, if you will, but it is affecting us. And so in the story, and I'm, not, I'm going to be very careful because maybe some of you haven't read the novel, so I don't want to give away any, you know, spoilers. Uh, but this family gets affected because, because of the drought and because of the winds and the fires and, the, you know, all the weather events that we have. And I list them and I studied them. In fact... Um, the book is broken down into 12 chapters, and every chapter is a month. So the whole book is a year in the life of this family from January to December. And there are a lot of weather events, fires and winds and things like that, atmospheric rivers. And every weather event is real. I went back and studied it and if, if it rained in the book, it rained that day, that particular day in LA. If, if there was a fire, it's a real fire. And I give the numbers of, you know, the homes burned, the, the acres burned, the, all of that. And then I use the real names of the fires. And so it's a little bit of a chronicle in a way of one year in you know, one year in the climate, climate life of LA. But that is kind of the backdrop, because in the front, uh, I wanted to have a family. In my first book, uh, Esperanza's Box of Saints, it's a mother-daughter story. In the second book, Gonzalez and Daughter Trucking Company, is a father-daughter story. So this book, I said, well, um, you know, I need to up the ante. I need to, you know, sort of include more people. And so I did a family story. So you have the father, Oscar, who is 
Mexican American. His family has been in California since before, you know, uh, Mexico lost California to the U.S. So he didn't cross the border. The border crossed him. Um, then the mother, Kayla, she is Mexican Jewish. And she meets Oscar when she comes from Mexico City as an exchange student to his high school. And they meet and they marry young. They married when they're 20 years old and they have three daughters. And the three daughters are first generation Mexican Americans who grow up in LA. And they're married and you know, some have kids. And, 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 and I, I wanted to portray this family because I wanted to cover sort of as much as I could the spectrum of the Latino, Latino life because we're very diverse as well and different. You know, there is Lola who works with them and helps Olivia, the second daughter, with her baby twins. And she comes from another neighborhood. And so I wanted to sort of describe the different Mexicans that live in LA who come from different walks of life, who have different means. Some of them are more wealthy, some of them are not, you know, but there is a mix. And that's who we are. And so I, I of course, in, it's impossible to describe every single one of the five million Mexican Americans in the city, but, but I wanted to sort of narrate this, this story and how they converge and how they go live together and how the, they make it work, they make it work. The three daughters, Claudia, Olivia, and Patricia, um, they all have something that I'm passionate about. Uh, Claudia, for instance, she's a chef. And I give myself away there because I'm such a foodie. And so I love food, and I love to talk about food, and I love eating food. And not only that, I marry the cook who loves to cook. Uh, and, and, and so through Claudia, I was able to express this passion for cooking. Olivia, the second daughter, is an architect, and she flips houses. And then she feels guilty she flipped houses because she's a little conflicted. Uh, but I like, I like that. I, I like conflict and contradiction. Um, and so I'm passionate about architecture. In particular, the architecture in LA is fascinating. And sometimes you see it in, in, on the streets, you know. I always say, you want to know what LA is like? Take surface streets. Forget the freeways, just take surface streets and just get lost in the city. And, and you will see all these, you know, different styles, you know, you have. Um, the craftsman, the, the, uh, the Spanish revival, even there's one called the Chatuesque, which <laughs> people go crazy here. There's the, there's the Toscan Villa, you know, there's all these styles and, and, and it's fun, it's really fun for me. So I wanted Olivia to, to have that so I could, you know, sort of wax poetic in terms of architecture. And then the youngest one, Patricia, she's 28, and I developed her because I wanted to understand my kids. I wanted to understand millennials in general, you know, I wanted to see what, what ticks them, you know, what makes them, you know, their hearts thump, you know, I, 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 and, and I, I kind of explore that with my own kids uh, who are in their, you know, mid-30s now, but when, when I was writing the book, they were early 30s or late 20s. And, and so I wanted to really, you know, get into that sort of generation and understand what they are. So obviously Patricia is a social media uh, expert. And so those are the three daughters. Kayla, the mother, she, the, the Jewish mother, Mexican Jew, uh, she's an artist. And Oscar has a secret. And I'm not going to 
say, because some, some of you might have not read the, the book yet, but the, that secret is what op opens, what makes the whole novel unravel. And so um, it, it's, it's going to be, you know, important for this family to come together and sort this out. So that's kind of a little bit of the story. And what uh, I, I would love to hear from you, I don't know, uh, Tim, would, would it be a time to, um, to go over there and then, yeah? Okay, so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we're gonna do questions and things, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. So I forgot to say at the beginning that I hope everybody got a question form. We're gonna try to collect any questions you've got from the audience. We're gonna try to avoid spoilers like that. So, um, but we'll, um, library staff will walk around and collect any forms that we've got and we'll try to get through as many of them as we can with the author. And we'll get us started here. Thanks, this is exciting. <laughs> so. We're always excited when one of our authors that's visiting us has a Pasadena connection. And I found out today that you have a pretty special one. Can you tell us about your connection with the Tournament of Roses and how you were connected with the, the parade, the annual parade here? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I was lucky enough. Well, it, there's a little yeah. backstory here. Mm -hmm. So to make a living, because as a writer, sometimes, or most times, it's hard to make a living. So I said, okay, so what am I going to do? You know, when I immigrated, I, I wanted a job that, where I could write, where I could be creative, uh, that, you know, helped me pay my bills. So I said, but uh, okay, so novel is too hard for me because, you know, I, I, I I don't speak English very well, uh, you know, so, but those are, you know, novel, memoir, nonfiction books, you know, you know, those would be the writers who uh, make a lot of money. On this end, you have the poets, you know, uh, I, I don't know what the poets do to make a living, but, <laughs> 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 but you have the poets. Um, and I said, well, but then, you know, Really, really, the genre that the genre that really you make the most money per word count would be, you know, the ransom note. <laughs> <laughs> we have your son, and you make a million bucks. You know, three words. But I didn't want to have to go through the hassle of cutting out letters and <laughs> you know it's just not not my thing so so i went for advertising which in a way is another form of fiction right well, telling a story right mm -hmm. so i i started to work in advertising i had my little ad agency and i got this client who are uh, it's it's a cuban family who uh live actually live in pasadena and they have a, a cheese brand, a Mexican-style dairy products, and they have a whole line of products, and they're really, really good. And every year, uh, they, they had a float at, at the, at the, at the Rose, Rose Parade. Parade. Mm -hmm. They had a float, and so, because I was working for them, and I was working in, in their advertising and promotion and PR, I got to, come every year to help prepare the float and I would bring my kids who were little wow. and we would do the flowers and yeah. put flowers here and there and they were great floats they would have a mariachi band on the float and yeah. you know it was just fantastic and and I would love coming I loved uh, coming every year yeah it's nice to hear it's just such an important part of our tradition here as a city it's really fun that you're connected to it yeah sure. yeah I have it's awesome very fun yeah, memories, awesome. lots of pictures. Yeah. yeah Let's talk about the novel. So, um, I love how you kind of pull back the curtain on the myth that Los Angeles has no weather, right? And that right. we're actually very turbulent at times, right? So, um, and I, in my head, I put it together with this, the family in the book 
It's very outwardly successful and looks like they have it made, but there's a lot of turbulence in this family too. Is there a connection or am I, that were you, was that intentional? Is there a relationship between the weather and the family in, in the book? Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. It's sort of a metaphor. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not always sunny. It's mm -hmm. not always mm -hmm. nice and toasty. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's storms and there's all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up watching telenovelas. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I can't help it. I'm Mexican. And so obviously there's a lot of melodrama in the story. And, 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 and it's, it's, there's an influence there. And I see it mm -hmm. and I can't help it. You mm -hmm. know, it's... it's it's got a sound, you know, I've had a, a lot of readers tell me, you know, it reads like a telenovela. I go, yeah. well, yeah, there's, there's that, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah. obviously, mm -hmm. you know, there was a very famous telenovela when I was little that I used to watch, uh, unbeknownst to my mother, uh, uh, titled The Rich Also Cry. And... <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's about this wealthy family who undergoes like a, a lot of drama, you know, everything happens there. You know, there's somebody permanently in the hospital, there's a blind aunt, there is a lost brother, mm -hmm. you know, there, it, it, telenovela. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's sort of a natural influence that I have. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how this family ended up. And the weather is some sort of metaphor of this, you know. It's turbulence, very like you say. Metaphor. Yeah. yeah. So your family are, are the Alvarados in this novel. What is the essence of this family? How would you describe them? Well, the Alvarados, uh, you know, they're a very tight knit family, mm -hmm. just like, you know, Mexican families. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all, um, you know, they fight, they keep secrets from each other. Uh, but when, you know, when it gets rough, they come together and it saves them, you know. Uh, what saves them is the fact that no matter what, you know, mm -hmm. if you're gonna get in trouble, I'll help you, you know, get out of trouble, you know, or I'll get you in trouble, you <laughs> know, also, because there's that also, they get each other in trouble. Uh, but, uh, but then they get them out of trouble, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, <laughs> that's what, families that's are what like. families are, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, there's a movie, there's a Wes Anderson movie, The Royal Tenenbaums, mm -hmm. and the, I remember the, the billboard, you know, it said, uh, uh, it had a, a, a slogan that I really like, and I think it's so true. Family is not a word, it's a sentence. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think it is so one. true, you know, in a way. But we can't, you know, we can't choose our family. We mm. can choose our friends, you yeah. know. Mm. So a lot of family turmoil, but in the end, you know, yeah. they love each other. They do. Yeah. Like, like my own family. Mm. <laughs> you mentioned just now that the, there are varied passions and interests of the women in this family, very successful careers and interests. What was it like to write about those varied interests, and how did you research them or were you did you know about social me this world of social media and and art and cuisine and every how did you how, what kind of research went into that not a lot mm. because i'm kind of a lazy writer so mm -hmm. i mostly write about what i like and what i know about mm. uh, or my family which there are several members of my family that are portrayed <laughs> in the novel and they're very happy, they, they love it. They, they all, they, those who are not portrayed are, are mad at me because I didn't include them in the novel. They wanted to be in the novel. <laughs> Why didn't you write anything about me, you know? But then there are others who, who are completely oblivious that I, that I took traits from them, you know, like my kleptomaniac aunt. Uh, she, she's, she, doesn't, she doesn't know she's in the book. Fine. <laughs> Funny, I guess. The sequel will have to. Have yeah, the other right. Family members, but right? the different traits are things that I love. You know, like Kayla, she's a ceramic artist, and I I did a, a degree on ceramics at Otis mm. Uh, mm. here locally in 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 LA. So I love ceramics; it's one of my passions. Um, agriculture 
what mm. did, which, which is what Oscar yeah. does. Um, I mean, I grew up in Mexico City, but we had a family ranch that we used to go all the, every weekend. And then I lived for three years mm. in, in the forest, you know, in a cabin. So I'm very close to, to nature, to agriculture. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Claudia, she's a, she, she's a yes. chef. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a chef groupie, you know. I fall, uh, with my husband, Pedro, who is here, sitting here, uh, I love food. Pedro is an amazing cook. And uh, we enjoy, you know, talking about food, cooking, mm -hmm. Eating, yeah. I don't cook, but you know, I chop onions. I set the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I kind of, you know, mm -hmm. bring the ingredients out, you know, <laughs> and he does the magic. Um, so that that is uh, a life. huge yeah. thing of me, yeah. and I love going to restaurants. And you know, I'm a fan of Jonathan Gold, mm -hmm. who I you know worshipped mm -hmm. uh, for many years. Yeah. So it's, it's a, uh, a thing that I love. The other, the, the architecture, you know, also. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, just by living in, in, in LA. And then you see all these architectural styles in movies and you wonder, did, the ar did this architecture copy the movie or did the movie copy the architecture? Yeah. You know, you, you kind of, it's, it's a blurry line here in, in Hollywood. So yeah. <laughs> you really know, yeah. you know? And then all the bad guys have these amazing homes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do a beautiful job catch, capturing all of that culture and arts and architecture. Right. It's yeah. <laughs> fantastic. I've got a couple of really great questions from okay. the audience I'd like to share. So, um, one of them, I think many of us might feel the same way. When you read this book, can you picture it on the screen as you're reading it? Yes. Yeah, so some of us want to know, are there any plans to bring this story to the screen? Yeah. Yes, there are yeah. plans. Okay. Uh, there are plans, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, right now there's a writer's strike. I don't know if yeah. you're aware. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, but I do have a pilot uh, written. Oh. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Hopefully, some oh, that's exciting. Big streamer okay. will pick it up. You yeah. know, I keep okay. I keep uh, you mm -hmm. know sending vibes. Yeah. You know, hopefully yeah. it'll happen. Uh, but uh, in, in the book itself, you know, and yeah. and that is. I think with all my books, um, mm -hmm. I, I tend to be a very visual person, yeah. very mm -hmm. visual. And so I, I get a lot into the senses mm -hmm. because for me, the senses are the only thing we have to mm -hmm. be in touch with the world. So everything is very visual. Mm -hmm. I describe the odors, yeah. the smells, mm -hmm. the you know, the textures, yeah. um, the, the taste yeah, of the things, yeah. you know, the colors. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I am very uh, sensorial, is that the word? Yeah, yeah. Sensor sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sensorial. Sorry. Yeah. And so because of that, you know, it, they kind of lend themselves, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, uh, to be oh, adapted yeah. it's for really the screen. It makes it easy for us as a reader to, to enter the world it. and be there with it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. I love this question too. Did you have a feeling in mind that you wanted readers to have after finishing this novel? Did you have, want them to feel a certain way? Um, I think the connection to family is mm. very important. The message of connection to family mm -hmm. uh, for me was an important thing yeah. that I wanted to convey. Yeah. Uh, but I also wanted, I also wanted to portray um, Latina women who were successful, career women, mm -hmm. who um, who do well. Uh, of course, all hell breaks loose, but mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but yeah. they've got careers, and yeah. you know, and and there is this sort of idea that has been going on for many years of um, you know Mexican women with their apron mm -hmm. at home raising a bunch of kids which we still do, but, uh, but we do that and, and we have a career, career. you know. Mm -hmm. So now we're being moms, we're being homemakers, mm -hmm. and we're being professionals. Mm -hmm. And the girls, you know, they're beating all the boys, they're beating every, mm -hmm. they're, they're getting all the degrees in college, they're getting great jobs, they're, mm -hmm. 
you know, they're out there, you know, contributing to the economy. And so I find, I find that um, the more we write about that, and that is a responsibility to me. I, 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 am, I feel responsible because we need to change the story. We need to change the story and bring it closer mm -hmm. to the reality that is today. I love that. You know, modern, yeah. mm -hmm. modern Latinas kicking mm -hmm. butt out yeah. there, you know? <laughs> That's yeah. what we need. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. So it's the family, of course, is the center of the novel and these incredibly powerful women with leading the families and leading these careers. It's not just the family, it's a commentary larger commentary on society then it sounds like but yes yeah. yes they mm -hmm. have their kids they have mm -hmm. their problems you know mm -hmm. they have the spouses you know mm -hmm. some better than the others mm -hmm. some really evil mm -hmm. but but mm -hmm. they they're they're yeah. pushing forward you know mm -hmm. and being members of society that yeah. are contributing yeah yeah that's great and the men i hope i'm not spoiling anything with this but let's get into this the, the men are not emotionally available for the most part in this book and <laughs> yes. the women are the ones holding the family together and getting through the, the crises. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I got a little criticism yeah. about mm -hmm. that because the men, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. are not front and center, mm -hmm. but I wanted to give the stage to the women, you yeah. know, and mm -hmm. have them solve all the issues and, you mm -hmm. know, be out there. Very matriarchal, yeah. if you, if mm -hmm. you will, but, you know, mm -hmm. why that not? Was <laughs> that was great. It's a great representation that we need more of in literature. It was fantastic. Yeah. And Oscar yeah. is a nice guy. He's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. And so is yes. Eric. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. two good and guys. And I hope for and two uh, bad Danielle, guys. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we want to know what your writing process is. We haven't talked about that much. How do you write your novels? Well, I, I, I say that I write all day. And I write in the shower, I write in the car, I write on an mm. elevator, I write, <laughs> uh, you know, um, while I'm, you know, hanging out with my cats. Mm. I'm, I'm, because I like to write uh, in my head, and then I go and type, mm. you know, and, and that's my way of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, putting the story together in my mm -hmm. head. And once I kind of yeah. have the story together, it, it becomes the compass in my pocket. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I know where to go. I know what to do, mm -hmm. you know. And if, if all of a sudden I sit in front of my computer mm -hmm. and I blank out and nothing comes out, which is what some people call writer's block, I know that I'm not ready. It's not the right, yeah. So that's when I say, you know, I cherish mm -hmm. and embrace writer's block because mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's mm -hmm. a tool for me. It's a way of telling me, yeah. you know, go, go back out there, live your life, do your thing. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready with your story, come back and type it up, you know. You trust when the time will yeah. come. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there are many writers, uh, mm -hmm. they'll tell you, you know, oh, I get up early in the morning and I write for mm -hmm. three hours and then, you know, yeah. or four hours or some people yeah. write all day uh, and, and then have a discipline and a schedule. But I can't do that yeah. because I mix my writing while I'm doing other things and then yeah. it, it just sort of comes together slowly. Yeah. That's great to know that there's not one way to do it. But every, every, yeah, no, there, it, and, yeah, and every writer mm -hmm. will tell you mm -hmm. something different mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. no right way or wrong way. You know, mm -hmm. there's no, the only thing mm -hmm. is, you know, be, be constant uh, in, in whatever your method is, just mm -hmm. keep doing it, yeah. you know? And, and, and I, I, I always um, tell my students at UCLA, I've been, you know, teaching creative writing there mm -hmm. for over 25 years, and I tell my students that I have a theory, and I call it the Molcajete theory. You know the Molcajete, which is that, that sort of stone ball with the three legs where you do the guacamole? So I call it the, the, the Molcajete theory, which is three legs. Mm -hmm. If you miss one leg, yeah. the pot spills, uh, tips over mm -hmm. and spills the guacamole. Uh, so one leg is talent. Mm. To be a successful writer, 
you have to have talent, and that's something that comes. You, you know, you nurture it, but you got to have at least something to start. The other leg is discipline. You have to stick to it and do it because you can be very talented, but if you don't have discipline, you're not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so the discipline is very important, no matter what your method is. Mm -hmm. And the third leg is motivation. Mm -hmm. Because you, can, you could be very disciplined or you could be very talented, but you've got to have, you've got to have that fire Drive. in you to, to, yeah. to be able to do mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I, I think that's, that's what, when, when you asked me about the writing process, mm -hmm. I think that discipline yeah. um, and motivation are, are, are crucial. And motivation. I'm grateful that you've got all three. That you've, you're used to, you're used to Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I have to clean up the guacamole. <laughs> uh, a couple of interesting questions. Someone, uh, the book is set in 2016, like you said, and um, it's, like you said, it's, you've, you check the weather, you know, every, every day of the week, and it's a, it's a tip. I thought it was fun while I was reading the book to take my phone out and look at my pictures from 2016 along the way and see like, oh yeah, it really was hot in February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, why 2016? Was that, was that an in, intentional choice for the story that you wanted just, to tell? It just happened to be the year that we were in New York and gotcha. mm -hmm. I, it started in January I and I mm -hmm. said, well, I'm just going to follow the year Makes and, sense. and mm -hmm. of course the year ended and I kept on writing because mm -hmm. it took me longer than that. But, mm -hmm. but, but at least I had my, mm -hmm. I had my structure mm -hmm. for, you know, it's, it's in the shape of a calendar. It's almost like it, mm -hmm. you know, little, yeah. little dates and events, you mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. And it's fun to, you know, to get, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you wrote this on my birthday, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I hit a few dates there. That yeah, that's awesome. Lots of comments of, uh, from the audience. People love the book. Um, and someone really resonated with them. The, the comparison you make between the East Coast and the West Coast. And that, you know, on the East Coast, it's almost a badge of honor to be working hard and, and show how tired you are from, from working hard. And in the West Coast, you say it's more like a, a, a I think it's a swan or a duck uh, gliding on, on the, the surface, pond, right? Yes. And, but what's happening under the water might not be the same, right? <laughs> yes. How did you come up with that metaphor? What, tell us more about that. Yeah. Well, I have New Yorker mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. and obviously living in California, mm -hmm. you know, I could, I could see the difference between the two, you know, the two cultures, you know, I mean, really, they, mm -hmm they almost brag how hard they work and, oh, I pulled an all-nighter. Uh, here in L.A., you're not going to hear that. It's like, you know, you may see, you know, two ladies, you know, chatting at the manicure, but they're really negotiating a contract, you know. <laughs> it, it's so much... They say, oh, California, you know, they're so laid back. They don't work. No, we work very hard. We mm -hmm. just don't brag about it. We just, you know... Yeah. On the contrary, we mm -hmm. we want to seem like yeah. we're chill, mm -hmm. we're cool. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. we don't native, sweat yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a native on the East Coast, and that was my impression too until I moved here. And I said, like, "Oh no, it's not that laid back. It just looks that way." Yeah, uh, exactly. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, just about to wrap up, so I've got yeah. One final question is about the weather. We'll go back to the title of the book. What is your favorite? LA weather. What's your favorite type of weather? Actually, right now, right after May gray and June gloom, you know, when June gloom starts to fade away and, you know, mm -hmm. the weather starts to heat up in July, I love that weather. Yeah. I also love October, mm -hmm. you know, mostly jacaranda season. Mm -hmm. I love jacaranda yeah. season. Yeah. I, you know, we have seasons, you know. We have, uh, we definitely, you know, it's like a drought, fire, yeah. pilot, awards, mm -hmm. you know. We have a bunch of seasons. Yeah. Thank you for celebrating our home. It's wonderful to have you here with us today. I'm grateful that you're willing to stay a couple more minutes and sign books for us. Yes, yes, of, I'm delighted, yes. And I ask the audience to join me in thanking Maria Amparo Escadon for joining us today to talk about her novel. Thank, Thank you. you.
Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome.